Hey guys, Simcoder here and today we're going to be starting on our YouTube website and in this video I'm just going to take you through the boilerplate uh, repository that I have ready for you guys to download and uh, to install some packages that uh, will be needed in order to uh, complete this project. So these packages, uh, I'm going to be installing them in my OS, which currently is Manjaro. Uh, but you can install them on macOS, uh, Windows and other Linux distros like Ubuntu, for example. Um, obviously, the, the terminal commands will be slightly different, but the, the, the essence is the same. And I'll drop down in the description some links for you guys to follow up if you have any other OS. So yeah, let's get started. This should be a fast one. So yeah, let's do it. Okay, so first things first, we'll need some packages to install. Uh, these are uh, these include Insomnia, um, BS Code, and Docker Compose. So Insomnia it j is just um, a tool that will allow you to make uh, HTTP requests. Uh, to our backend uh, in an easy way and you'll be able to add parameters and things like that. I'll show you how it works in a second. Then VS Code is my preferred code editor, but you are free to use whatever you want. If you want to use Vim, if you want to use Sublime, if you want to use whatever, just use whatever you feel comfortable with. I use VS Code because it allows me to use some plugins that are really helpful when it comes to uh, code development and in this case, web development. Then, uh, finally, but not the least, uh, we have Docker Compose, which is uh, just Docker, basically, and um, it will allow us to deploy our projects for development and production if you want to. Uh, and if you are not uh, familiar with Docker, uh, it isn't uh, a VM, uh, a virtual machine, but uh, it is easier to think of it as if it were. Uh, but this is completely wrong. Uh, it's just an easier way to, to think about it. it. It isn't a VM, but uh, it works like one in some situations. And uh, if you want to learn more about it, I'll drop a link down below for a tutorial for Docker so that you can fully understand what it does and how it works. It is a really cool tool, which basically allows me to borrow my PC to you uh, in this way. I can make sure that if a Docker functions in my PC, it will most likely function in yours. So it is an incredibly powerful tool, which will make um, the full uh, will use uh, to the fullest extent in this lesson. So uh, the first thing that we are going to do is to install these packages, as I've said. And in this case, because I'm using Manjaro, I'm going to use a package called EA in order to install other packages. This is a really cool tool because I just need to uh, call the name of the package that I want, and it will, it will try to find um, every instance of that package in multiple places. So let's try to find it. And uh, we want the one community Docker Compose, fast, isolated development environment using Docker. That's what we want. So proceed with installation. If you are using other OSs, then the links will be down below on how to install all of these packages. So don't worry about that. Uh, next up, we'll be uh, installing visual code. This is good because I, I've just reinstalled Manjaro, so I can show you the full process and show you how little packages you actually need to start development. And finally, we'll install Insomnia. Again, this is the packages which will allow us, us to make HTTP requests uh, really easily and to save them for future, uh, future uses. Okay, so now that we have all of our packages installed, we can simply go into my GitHub, go into my repositories, and you'll see that I have a repository called YouTube Clone Docker. The link for this is down below, so don't worry about it. Uh, just go uh, down below really fast and uh, open up that link. Um, and in order to uh, clone a, a repository, all you have to do is to click on this drop down, which will give you a link. Uh, this link you can really easily uh, clone uh, the project with. So let's just clear the terminal and say git clone and then paste in the link. 
it will start cloning and as you can see we have the package right there okay so now uh, inside here and i'm going to quickly jump into it to clone docker and i'm going to open up uh, my code editor in this case vs code zoom in a bit and in here you'll be able to see uh, this is a, a bit small but uh, don't worry you can see it for yourself you'll see that we have some uh, structure here so we have the back end and the front end these are obviously our major two uh, factors for this project and in the front end we are running react and the back end we are running node.js with mongodb okay and the cool thing about docker for example is that we have a docker compose up a, a docker compose file here which will just compile everything and make sure that everything is running in the right port uh, you'll see that there are some things uh, commented out in here and these lines are uh, meant to uh, allow you to deploy this project for production so uh, if you want to deploy it for production all you have to do is to uncomment them and uh, put in uh, your url or bury it, your domain here and it will automatically generate um, an ssl certif certificate which is really quite nice and yeah that's basically it so uh, right now the files are really empty if you go into routes which will be our main uh, file for the backend uh, we we only have one route which is an endpoint so uh, if we call up the endpoint uh, slash with nothing ahead of it then it will just print out backend connected and i'll show you how to do that in a second and if you go into the front end let me just check we have the app.js which is our main uh, front-end file and it just says front-end connected so this is uh, basically uh, as as cleaned out a project as you can get with docker i try to place in all of the packages that we'll need for react and ojs uh, already so you you won't even need to install anything else in the future So right now, in order to get your Docker up and running, make sure you are in the projects folder and simply say sudo docker compose up slash uh, slash not uh, hyphen hyphen build. Run it and it will start compiling the Docker. Now, there is an error that is quite um, normal to appear in here let me just come in here yep uh, this error and this is something that i always have problems with uh, and let me just go into vs code in order to show you uh, error couldn't connect to docker daemon at uh, whatever uh, this just means that the docker isn't running as a service and you you have to do that so in order to to do that let me come in here i believe no it won't show you uh, but I can show you in the Google, um, in the Stack Overflow threads. Uh, all you have to do is let me just try to find it. Come in here. Nope, not this. Yeah, that. Pseudo system CTL start Docker. And it can also be pseudo service uh, start uh, Docker start. So try both of them. And one of them will start Docker as a service and will be able to freely uh, call up the, the lines. Keep in mind that I had already previously started this Docker, so it was quite fast. Your first Docker build will take some time because it has to pull uh, all of the packages uh, and download them. So uh, it takes some time in the first time. But then when it builds and if there are not any errors, then you'll get, uh, you'll see here that we have Mongo, we have backend and we have front end. So this is all of the containers that uh, our Docker Compose started and we are able to go into uh, the URL for uh, our React web page. So uh, go to localhost 2.300 and we have the front end connected, which is exactly what we had there. Uh, then coming into Insomnia, I can show you how the back end is working and let me just come in here i believe the port is uh, 60 uh, 6200 so i'm going to make a new request 
and it will be 168 uh, i can call localhost so let's do that it's easier and then the port 6200 this is the port that our backend is running on so uh, now that we have our uh, port running our that we created our um, request better yet we can come in here up top and say local host 6200 slash and send the request and we'll get backend connected because um, as per our um, docker compose we can see that all of the ports that are exposed for each of the containers. So in the back end, we have exposed the 6200, and for the front end, we have uh, the 3000 uh, uh, ports opened. Okay, so this is basically it. But now I want to do one uh, last thing before wrapping up. Hopefully you have your Docker running, but if you don't, then please leave the questions down below and I'll try to answer them as fast as possible. Uh, we'll use Firebase for um, our authentication system. So for that, we'll need to create a Firebase project, which is really quite easy to do. Just come in here. Okay, there we go. Uh, and simply create a project. I'm going to call my project uh, YouTube Clone. I'm not going to enable analytics, but yeah, you, you are free to do so. So give it some time, it will then create your project. Two hours later. All right, after your project has finished loading, we, you can just simply click continue and it will um, throw you into this page. So now in order to connect Firebase with uh, the project, all you have to do is to click here on uh, get started by adding a Firebase to your app and click the web sign. So, yep, do it, give it a name. In this case, it will be YouTube clone as well uh, and register app. After some time, it will give you this code, but don't worry about it at the second because at the second, because we'll get it somewhere else. And if you go into settings, then project settings, you'll land on this page and you'll need this piece of code. So let me go into VS code. And in order to uh, set up your project, uh, connect your project with Firebase, all you have to do is to go into config, config.js and paste that in here. It's really that simple. Uh, so this is in front end source config, config, and uh, you can drop them down in here. This could be an environment uh, variable, but I didn't see the point in it uh, because it will be exposed uh, nonetheless. So this is just easier for you guys to, to follow along. Okay, so then that uh, now that you have um, these uh, parts in your project, uh, we'll have to go into service accounts. This is because the backend uh, requires you to have a service account in order to connect to Firebase. Because even though we are logging in through our uh, our front end, in the backend we'll do token validations, and that part is tremendously important because we, it will allow us to um, validate the user and make sure that the user that's making the current request is really that user and that we have a secure app. So the first thing that you see when you come in here, uh, make sure Node.js is selected, uh, is this database URL. So copy it and go into um, the backend folder, config, config. It's basically the same as the front end. And again, this could be an environmental, uh, an environment variable, uh, but for sake of simplicity, I just place it like this because you can just simply copy and paste. Um, and then going back to the Firebase project, you generate a new private key. This private key, uh, you should not show this to anyone. I'm going to show it because I'm going to uh, clear this project afterwards, so I really don't care. Uh, but this will, it will give you a JSON, which will give uh, the backend uh, admin privileges in order to do anything uh, the code wants. Uh, with your Firebase account. So be careful with this. Uh, this part uh, shouldn't be shared with anyone. It should be in the Git ignore because uh, people can uh, simply 
download your rep repository if it isn't private and um, use your Firebase account as if they own it. So really careful about these parts. Okay, so uh, then we are done. Uh, we have the Firebase connected, we have our Docker running, and we have everything that we need uh, in order to start developing. Um, if you have any problems during this, this lesson, then please comment down below. I'll do my best to help you. Uh, Stack Overflow, remember, is always your friend. I'm going to right now create a forum in our website where you can go and ask questions and see previously asked questions. Uh, use that, uh, please, because it clears up uh, the YouTube comment section and I don't have the time to answer every single comment i read them but i don't have the time to answer to every single one so if you want if you have a technical question then please go to my website and uh, the forum will be there ready for you so thank you guys very much for watching we are ready to start programming and it will be uh, amazing obviously so let's try to do to make the best of it and yeah i hope to see you again tomorrow and ciao